a cordial greeting. Today is Monday, June 19, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it is 7 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring what is now Tropical Storm Brett. In this video, we will be discussing the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, the existing uncertainty in the storm's trajectory, and how strong it could become in the Caribbean region. On the other hand, in this image, we can also see a strong tropical wave that has been designated as Invest 93. This tropical wave appears very active and is supported by the models, suggesting that it may possibly develop into tropical depression number 4 of the season. Currently, it has a 50% chance of development over the next 7 days as it generally moves west-northwest. If this strong tropical wave develops into tropical depression number 4 or tropical storm Cindy, it is anticipated to follow a west-northwest trajectory and then take a turn more towards the north, passing far from the Caribbean region. For now, this tropical wave does not pose a risk to the Caribbean region, unlike Tropical Storm Brett. Now let's take a look at the visible satellite animation so you can see how organized Tropical Storm Brett appears. Remember that earlier in the morning, we had Invest 92, and in the morning video, I mentioned that it could possibly develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm during the day. Around 11 a.m., the National Hurricane Center classified this disturbance as a tropical depression, and then at 5 p.m., they classified it as Tropical Storm Brett. It currently has maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. Furthermore, earlier in the morning, I mentioned that there was a lot of uncertainty, especially between the American model and the European model, as the American model consistently projected a track away from the Caribbean, while the European model indicated a west-northwest trajectory. Today, we confirmed that the European model had a better outlook, and so far, tropical storm bred is following the European model's forecast more accurately. Additionally, the GFS model has been dramatically readjusting the track of this cyclone and now shows that it should reach the Caribbean region. Also, note that Tropical Storm Brett has good ventilation in the northwest and north quadrants, which means that conditions in these areas are favorable for its strengthening, at least for the next 48 to 72 hours. It will be very important and key to see how much this disturbance can strengthen, as it will have a significant effect on whether it takes a northward trajectory, approaching the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, or if it remains weaker with a more westward track over the Caribbean Sea. As shown by the European model, at least for now and as we can see in the visible satellite image, Tropical Storm Brett appears to be gradually strengthening, in line with the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. When we zoom in on the infrared satellite image, we can observe a better structure, but there are currently no indications that it will rapidly intensify. The key in this forecast is to observe how much it strengthens over the next two to three days in order to have a better idea of the potential trajectory it might take in the Caribbean region. According to the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, a predominantly west-northwest trajectory is expected, at least until next Thursday and Friday, and it should reach the eastern Caribbean region in the afternoon, possibly as a Category 1 hurricane. The National Hurricane Center's forecast indicates a gradual strengthening, at least until Thursday afternoon which could lead this system to become a Category 1 hurricane. However, after it reaches the Caribbean and as we have discussed in previous videos, strong wind shear is expected to affect this cyclone and weaken it as it moves just south of the island of Puerto Rico. Furthermore, it is important to mention that the National Hurricane Center also states that there is uncertainty, especially starting from Thursday, because the final trajectory of this system will depend on how strong it is when it approaches the Lesser Antilles arc. A more intensified system, such as a Category 1 hurricane, will likely have a trajectory more towards the north, approaching the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. However, if it remains as a tropical storm, it may move more westward over the Caribbean Sea in an area where conditions could lead to the dissipation of this disturbance. So, I reiterate, there is a lot of uncertainty starting from next Thursday. This can be clearly seen in the specialized forecast models. Notice that some of them, starting from Thursday, have a trajectory with a more northwestward component, while others maintain a more westward component. The National Hurricane Center's forecast represents a blend of these two possible solutions. And specifically, what will determine whether it takes a turn towards the Puerto Rico region or remains over the waters of the Caribbean Sea. It is precisely the intensity it reaches over the next two to three days. For example, we have some models that project it to become a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane, while others maintain it as a tropical storm. These models that strengthen it into a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane are the ones that have a trajectory slightly more northward, while those that depict a weak or moderate tropical storm keep it more westward. What we do know is that once it reaches the Lesser Antilles arc, conditions will not be favorable for further strengthening. In fact, it is expected that conditions will lead this cyclone to weaken somewhat rapidly, 
and this is due to several factors. First, note that starting from Wednesday night, the wind shear will begin to increase significantly, up to 25 knots. Also, observe that the relative humidity is expected to decrease as it approaches the Caribbean. So, the combination of lower humidity and higher wind shear should be sufficient for this cyclone to start weakening from Thursday. One of the main factors protecting the Caribbean region or at least causing it to weaken is the strong wind shear anticipated to be present over the northern and central Caribbean starting from Wednesday. This wind shear is associated with the El Niño phenomenon. Here we can see how El Niño can impact these systems. Remember that in the tropical Atlantic region, El Niño has little effect, but it causes strong wind shear in the Caribbean. When these cyclones move into this area, they would encounter wind shear that can significantly weaken them. Fortunately, the wind shear is currently preventing the development of a more powerful cyclone, providing us with some protection. However, I would like to mention that we will be closely monitoring the situation because the circulation of tropical storm bread is quite small, and such circulations are vulnerable to significant changes in intensity, whether strengthening or rapid weakening. This contributes to the uncertainty in the long-term trajectory. Let's now take a look at what the best global models show. Here we have the GFS model with a trajectory initially towards the west-northwest, similar to the European model and the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Also, note that between Tuesday and Wednesday, it has Tropical Depression 4 or Tropical Storm Cindy developing from the tropical wave that we are also monitoring in the Atlantic. The GFS model strengthens Tropical Storm bred into at least a moderate or strong tropical storm, but starting from Wednesday, it appears that dry air will begin to impact the circulation of this cyclone. That is another limiting factor that will contribute to its weakening over the next few days. In fact, when it reaches the Eastern Caribbean, the GFS model weakens it to a moderate or weak tropical storm, and you can also observe the dry air possibly affecting its circulation. Then, by Saturday, tropical storm Brett passes over Puerto Rico, but significantly weakened. We also see the potential tropical storm Cindy maintaining a trajectory away from the Caribbean region. Now let's take a look at the European model. The European model maintains a forecast of tropical storm Brett remaining quite weak over the next few days. Currently, it only has it as a moderate tropical storm, but when it reaches the Eastern Caribbean, you can see that it predicts significant interference from dry air with the circulation and when it encounters the wind shear in the Caribbean. Essentially, the European model dissipates this disturbance south of Puerto Rico in the afternoon or evening hours of Friday. This provides an overview, but I also wanted to mention that the European model tends to underestimate the intensity of these cyclones slightly. The most logical approach, and what the National Hurricane Center has done, is to seek a kind of average between both solutions, the European model with a very weakened system and the GFS model with a slightly stronger system. However, the National Hurricane Center has taken a conservative approach and has Tropical Storm Brett becoming a Category 1 hurricane, considering some models that strengthen it into a hurricane and also the uncertainty that exists in systems that are so compact. Other models, like the German model, keep it extremely weak as it moves south of Puerto Rico, just like the United Kingdom model, which has it as only a tropical depression or weak tropical storm passing south of the island. Additionally, the ensemble members of the European model, see that all of them keep it as a weak or moderate tropical storm, moving mainly to the west and passing well south of Puerto Rico. Also, note that Invest 93 becomes a tropical storm but passes far away from the Caribbean region, and the GFS model members show a similar forecast but with tropical storm Brett slightly stronger. Therefore, it takes a trajectory closer to the region of Puerto Rico and the islands north of the Lesser Antilles Arc. The GFS model also has Invest 93 becoming a tropical storm but passing far away from the Caribbean region. Finally, I wanted to discuss the potential effects we can expect on the islands of the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. According to the European model, with a trajectory passing further south, you can see that the islands north of the Lesser Antilles could experience some tropical storm force winds, and perhaps some coastal regions in the south and east of Puerto Rico. Remember that a trajectory just south of the island puts the most active part over this area. A trajectory like the one indicated by the National Hurricane Center at the moment could bring some tropical storm force winds to Puerto Rico because the northern part of these systems is the most active. Similarly, we also have the forecast from the GFS model, which shows some tropical storm force winds affecting the northern half of the Lesser Antilles and the region of Puerto Rico. According to this forecast, the tropical storm would reach the Lesser Antilles arc between Friday and Saturday and then pass over or near Puerto Rico between Saturday and Sunday. Well, that's all for tonight's update. Stay tuned for another video that I will be recording tomorrow morning so that you don't miss any of the videos I'll be recording over the next few days, as well as the live coverage. I recommend subscribing to my channel.
click the red button below the video that says subscribe, and then click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. Alright, with that, I bid you farewell. Stay tuned for the 11pm bulletin and the video I'll be recording tomorrow morning. See you later.